Alright guys, welcome back. Now that we've covered the very basic fundamentals of using GameMaker, uh, what we're going to look at over this next series of videos is how to make your first actual kind of playable game. So we're going to be looking at making a very, very simple uh, top-down scrolling shooting game. And the first thing we're going to be looking at in this video is uh, player movement, so how to move uh, the player object like left and right, the different ways you can do that through cone, through drag and drop and all that kind of stuff, so that you can decide what approach is best for you and your game and hopefully you'll learn a lot. So as you can see I already have my player object set up here in the middle of the screen and uh, if you don't have any idea what objects are or how I got to this stage please watch my last video on uh, Game Maker Basics. Um, that'll teach you everything you need to know just about the sort of very basics about how like sprites, backgrounds, objects work and so on and so forth. Um, so if we go into our player object over here um, the first thing we're going to look at is how to move left and right through um, through the drag and drop system, and then I'm going to explain it through code. I did walk through it a little bit uh, in the last video, like the sort of basic elements of it, but we're going to try and sort of walk through it in a bit more detail and explore what all the kind of different options you have here, what they all strictly do, so that you have a good idea of all the different sort of main ways you have to implement movement in your game, and you can decide what's best for you. Okay, so the first and easiest method of doing left and right movement in uh, in the drag and drop system is to go to events, add event. Uh, we're going to want to make an event for when the player hits the left key or hits the right key, um, or whatever controls you happen to want. And the basic way we do that is go to keyboard, and uh, I mean we could hit left here or we could hit right here, or um, we could go to like um, others uh, like letters or whatever or whatever control you want to set. Here, depending on whatever controls your game is using, we're just going to use left and right for now. So if we go to keyboard left, now as I explained before, this event up here called keyboard left will uh, will trigger whenever the left key is held. So like every single frame of the game, it'll check to see if the left uh, arrow key is being pressed, and if it is, it'll run these events over here. Um, so the actions we want to take are obviously now to move our character to the left. So what we want to use here, the very simplest way of doing this, is not actually to use these move fixed things, it's to use a jump command. This uh, this arrow arrow pointing to the dot over here is the jump to position action. So if you drag that into actions, you'll get this little dialog up here. Um, what this means is we move directly to a specific position on the screen. And if we tick this box uh, called relative at the bottom here, what that means is that these coordinates are relative to the object and not to the room because obviously if we set lay like, if we turn this off and we set this to zero 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 as a coordinate is like the top left of your room so that would mean whenever you held left uh, the character would just walk to the top left of the room that's not what we want to happen we want to move about three pixels to the left of where we were before every frame so we want to tick relative so our movement is related to the object we want to go to X and we want to say, and because you know left is lower and right is more in terms of X coordinates, we want to say minus 3. So we want to move 3 pixels to the left. Okay. And then obviously we want to do the same thing the other way around. So if we go to do this again, go to keyboard, add uh, keyboard right, and then do the same thing again, jump to position, relative, X plus 3. Okay. So now if we hit OK and we run that, hopefully all going well, which it has eventually, there we go, we can now yep, move left and right. And you can see the kind of movement this creates for you. Um, it's very, very specific, straightforward method of movement because you are literally moving three pixels every frame that the game is detecting a left or right input. So that's that's literally the simplest way of doing movement. So another way to move left and right uh, using this is to use these moved uh, uh, move commands up here. So if we get rid of these for now, and we go to left and we use uh, move move fixed with these arrows on it, and uh, we're moving to the left, so we want to take the left direction, and we set our speed to three. Uh, this is slightly different. The way this works is different, let me just set the right direction up exactly the same. We don't have to put minus in here because we're just setting you know, an absolute speed in a certain direction, so speed 3 going that way. 
The way this is different though is this sets a speed that doesn't go away. Well, whereas before what we were doing was moving the player object by a specific amount every frame, this is setting your speed to be a certain amount and your speed is a, val a value that moves your object every single frame by itself until something makes that speed go away. So that means once we start moving, we're not going to stop until something causes us to stop moving, which if you've a basic understanding of Newtonian physics will sound kind of familiar to you. <laughs> um, so what we need to do is we need to create a force of friction. What that means is a force that slows the object down after it started moving and causes you to come to a halt. So if we go to our events and go to add event, on creation, so that means when the object has just been created, and then this little icon up here with the arrow turning into the smaller arrow is our set friction um, action. So what we, we typically want our friction to be a very very low value, literally something like 0 0.05 like 0 0.5 or like maybe even less, maybe a little bit more test that value, we'll see how that one works. But I mean, the reason you this is a very small value is because what friction does is friction literally reduces your speed by this amount every single frame of the game while your speed is not zero. So if your speed is like minus two and your friction is say 0.5, it'll go from minus two to uh, minus 1.5 to minus one to 0, uh, minus 0 0.5 to zero, like over the course of like four frames. Whereas like if your speed was 2, it would go from 2 to 1.5 to 1 to 0 0.5 to 0. You get the idea. So if we set our friction to 0 0.5, and now left and right should set us our speed to about 3, and we compile again. And there we have it. We should be moving left and right, and now if I just tap the key, I start moving at 3, and then the friction causes us to slide to a halt. It's a little bit slidey at the moment because you know you can play with the values to get it to stop sort of more firmly or more on point. But this is sort of a, a, a looser, more sort of analog method of moving about. So that's how we move with the move fixed command. However, what we are still doing with uh, our move fixed command is we are still setting our speed to be a specific value as opposed to slowly accelerating to that speed as you know you might want for however you want your game to feel so you might want to slowly move up to a speed as opposed to sort of instantly setting yourself to, to move in a, uh, a specified speed so in order to create acceleration instead of just sort of you know stack uh, a movement value what we need to do is if we go to these actions and we tick this relative box again. Again what this means is we're setting the speed to basically be three in this direction relative to what your speed currently is. So we're kind of adding three to your speed as opposed to we're adding a speed of three in the left to your current speed as opposed to just setting your current speed to be three in that direction. Of course three would be way too much to accelerate by so we're going to set this to one and left and in the right we're going to do the same thing one and relative and now this would go absolutely nuts um, because we at the moment we would accelerate left and right by one constantly and the friction is still the only thing slowing us down so theoretically if we hold left for like 10 frames we're already moving uh, 10 pixels a frame like <laughs> to the left so we need to establish a maximum speed this is where things get a little bit more tricky, but not really by all that too much. So I'm going to go to events, go add event, and we're going to look at the step event now. The step event is, um, I think I explained before, is literally um, an event that just triggers every single frame. So every single frame, the stuff in this, uh, this action thing will happen to this object. So what we want to do here now, if I can find it, is test. Here we go. Test variable, the little circle, circular type var thing with the word var in it. So what this is, is we're, we're asking the game a question right now. We're going to ask if the variable speed, which is, uh, as you might have guessed, represents uh, is the variable that we've been setting numbers to with those uh, actions in our left and right um, uh, events. So we're going to test if speed is uh, greater than 6. So in either direction, like it doesn't matter what direction you're in, if your total speed of your of our object is greater than 6, we will carry out any actions that follow 
from this, this action. So if speed is greater than 6, that's, our, that's the first action we're doing in our step event. After that, if the speed is greater than 6, what we want to do is set speed to 6. So what that means is if you would go above 6, so like the game is trying like uh, to move you at 6.5 or it's trying to move you at 7 or whatever, uh, we just set our speed back to 6. So that, that basically imposes a maximum speed. We can be below that, but we can't be above that, and that's in either direction. So if our speed is greater than 6, set variable speed to 6. Now, we might want to turn our friction up a little bit, because uh, how it was before was a little bit slidey. So if we turn our friction up to 2.2, so that we hopefully get a little bit of a better slide to a stop. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, as you can see, we're now accelerating to a speed of a maximum of 6. And then when we let go of the button, we slowly slide to a halt. So we slide to start, and we slide to a halt. So that's how you can create a kind of more sort of slidey and fluid movement uh, to your character. Obviously, it depends exactly on what kind of feel you're, you're looking to create in the end. But those are the sort of two main methods of moving your character around. You're either jumping to a new position every frame based on... Uh, based on a value that you want your player to always move at, so just add like 5 to your X or whatever to, to keep moving like 5 pixels a frame, or what you're doing is you're creating um, uh, an acceleration every time you're holding left or right, and then creating a maximum speed you can reach, and then creating a friction that slows you down when you're not pressing those buttons. I mean, there's little extra variants you could do in between, so you could have it so that when you, you're moving like this, every time you're not pressing one of those buttons, you instantly like lose all your speed. You could just set your speed to be zero, so that like if you want to be able to come to an instant stop and you don't want this kind of sliding effect that we've got going on, then you could do that as well if you still wanted acceleration but you didn't want friction. You know, you can use, you can mix and match until you create the feel that you want to feel. The feel that you want to feel? Well, yeah, I guess that makes sense.